You're listening to The Higher Ed Marketer, a podcast geared towards marketing professionals in higher education. This show will tackle all sorts of questions related to student recruitment, donor relations, marketing trends, new technologies, and so much more. If you're looking for conversations centered around where the industry is going, this podcast is for you. Let's get into the show. Welcome to the Higher Ed Marketer Podcast, brought to you by Kaler Solutions and Think Patented. Again, we try to bring you each week people that we admire, that we feel that are bringing value to the higher ed marketing community. And today is no different. Someone that both Bart and I are familiar with, Jamie Giblet from Digistorm, and they have mobile apps for higher education that a lot of people are talking about once they are familiar with it. Yeah, Troy, I've really enjoyed getting to know Jamie. We met last year in the middle of the pandemic, and uh, we'll go into the story a little bit more on the on the conversation. But uh, Jamie has become a friend, and we have done some work together. So just to kind of be full, fully transparent with everyone, but I th- really invited him to come on to talk about the idea of using mobile apps in higher ed marketing. And we do talk about their app a little bit, but it's more along the lines of how apps can work and how marketers can use them. I'll be honest, I have uh, probably sold away from apps over the past five or 10 years just because I I really didn't think that they were necessary, especially if you had a a mobile-friendly website. But talking to Jamie and and learning more about how apps work today and also how affordable they are from when I had experienced them 13 years ago when we did a custom app for one of our clients, it really changed my mind. And I really started to think through from a marketing standpoint of how this tool could be used in the broader sense of a lot of, lot more of a marketing plan. So I'm really excited to talk to Jamie about that and to, to kind of hear his perspective. Thank you, Bart. Let's bring Jamie into the conversation. It is my pleasure to welcome Jamie Giblet into the conversation. And I must warn everyone that he has a very thick Colorado accent. Welcome to the conversation, Jamie. Thank you, Troy, and also thank you, Bart, for having me. And yes, I cannot hide my Colorado accent. Um, it follows me wherever I go. Um, and I, I was actually just joking that uh, someone was was uh, jiving me saying that I had a nice Italian accent, a nice accent from Alabama. So today it's Colorado. But if you can't pick it, I'm originally from Australia. Thank you. And if you would tell us a little bit more about you and also Digistorm and your role there. Oh, absolutely. So... Don't give me too much rope to talk about myself because I do like to talk and talking about myself is one of my favorite topics. But uh, I've been with Digistorm. We're a software development company that was born in Australia for about five years. And then at the start of last year, I had the opportunity to fly over to this great nation and set up an office in Denver, Colorado, hence the Colorado accent. <laughs> for better or worse, that just happened to be timed with one of the weirdest times in our modern history with the pandemic. So the first 18 months in this wonderful country have been unusual, but it's been unusual everywhere in the, everywhere in the world. So there's no, uh, no no difference, I guess, here in the US. Everyone's been dealing with it. But finally now out on the conference circuit and getting to meet a bunch of amazing people out on the road. And circling back, though, I'm the sales manager here for Digistorm in North America. So I, uh, I still like to talk about myself and then start talking about conferences. So thanks for the question, though, Troy. That's why we have you here in... Tell everyone what Digistorm does. Fab. So uh, we're literally in the the middle of celebrating our 10-year anniversary and so much so that I even got sent a 10-year anniversary little gift pack uh, myself. So we've been making software for schools and education institutions, colleges, universities for 10 years. And we specialize in creating beautiful mobile communication apps that are uniquely positioned to help build community aid in retention, aid in attraction, and also engage with alumni when it comes to higher ed institutions. Well, thanks, Jamie. This has been great. I I know that you and I met, I think I met the other guys at Digistorm first. Um, I, we had a common connection on LinkedIn, a, a, another school in, in, in the uh, Pacific Rim that I knew the marketer of. And he's like, oh, you've got to meet these guys at Digistorm. As a matter of fact, they're trying to set up a shop in North America in, in the United States. And they're thinking about Boston. They're thinking about, you know, all these different places. And and so once uh, once you kind of landed, you and I had a chance to kind of start to, to 
to get to know each other. And so uh, we got to meet face to face last year, uh, earlier this year, I guess, at the uh, ABHE conference in Orlando, which was one of the first conferences that actually went back to, you know, in person. So we, uh, we spent a few days together. Troy was there as well. And so we all got to know each, a little, uh, each other a little bit better. And I know one of the things that I have had over the course of my career with, with higher ed marketing is just how many schools came up to me and said, Hey, do you think we ought to do a mobile app? And, uh, you know, that's been going on for, uh, from my point of view, probably 12 years, people have been asking me that. And about 12 years ago, I had a school do that. And I said, yeah, let's figure that out. And we spent way too much money and way too much time on a custom app. And it really gave me just this bad taste in my mouth. And, and I mean, it, we delivered it. And it was, it was a good product, but um, I just felt like there was just so much more to it than what there needed to be. And then when I met you and you started showing me your product that I was just, uh, just fell in love with it again and realized that you know, not only the fact that you kind of, you know, you, you take care of everything on the back end, but also you've got kind of a, a content management system for the, for the app that really the schools can manage on their own. And that really fascinated me. So maybe we can just have a little bit of a conversation. Just tell me a little bit about how you see apps playing into, you know, uh, let's, let's keep it to the higher ed space, but just how do you see that playing into to the education experience for, for students, uh, especially those students that are on campus? Absolutely. And thanks for reminding me about uh, the journey to coming to this podcast today because I was at a conference last week and someone asked me how I ended up there. And I said, Look, I met this wonderful gentleman, Bart Kayla. And they're like, oh, how'd you meet him? I'm like, he just seemed to pop into my life. I can't remember the exact genesis of the story. So I needed <laughs> to ask you and you just gave it. So thank you. Everything clicked back into place there. So great question. I think uh, in terms of being able to connect with your community and, and sorry, sorry, from a student perspective, so not, not from the college's perspective, feeling connected to the community that you're in is something that is really important. I think pre-COVID, we all knew that, you know, having a connected community was, was super important and it was important for retention, whether you're a college, university or, or another education institution. But in this current slash post-pandemic world, I think understanding the importance of community is is just even even more at the front of mind. So for me, there's there's plenty of wonderful things that an app can do. And not just the Digistore app, as Bar mentioned, he worked on an app, um, a custom app himself, uh, just over a decade ago. So we're not the only providers out there. But the thing that I think is most important about an app is it being a reflection of what your community is about. It's being about your your brand, about your voice in a in a, uh, a college or university setting and fostering that sense of community that aids in retention, aids in creating evangelists out of your students so that they want to, to, to rave about your institution because they feel so connected through a device that, you know, 95% of the time is either in their pocket or within our arm's reach. I think that would be the key, the key thing for in, improving that experience for a, for a student is just making them feel part of the community no matter what's going on in the outside world with a pandemic or no pandemic, that can really facilitate that. Yeah, that was one of the things that I, you know, as you and I got to know each other and as I started learning more about apps and, and, and kind of the, the, the modern version of them, you know, because like I said, 10 years, 12 years ago, that was a different flavor. But I think one of the things that I realized and came to realize is that many times these apps are, you know, we talk about higher ed marketing and, and so many times, and, and Nate Simpson from the Gates Foundation a couple of weeks ago was kind of reminding us of everybody kind of markets to these students. And once they get there, they're just kind of like, well, we're done marketing to them and, and we move on. And I thought that was really a, an astute observation. And I think that sometimes as marketers, we think about, okay, well, we really have a responsibility to market kind of all the way from when, when there's a suspect or a prospect through inquiry to, to app and then accept it. And then, and then we get into the deposited and then matriculated. Well, then we go through the years of, of school. We've still got to do some kind of marketing to kind of help them understand that, hey, I made a really good decision. I'm, I'm here for a reason. And I'm going to come back after first semester freshman year. I'm going to come back after freshman year. And I've realized that I think that the apps really do a lot for retention. Is that kind of what you're finding some of your schools are realizing? Absolutely. And I, I, you've hit the nail on the head that the conversation doesn't stop after that application has been approved and we've collected some, some money to enroll a student. Um, if the conversation ends there, there is a big risk that, that, that particular student is, is going to become disconnected and disengaged. So 
you've yeah you've absolutely nailed it with saying we're talking about retention the best admission strategy is always going to be undermined by attrition if we're not looking after our student body and and keeping uh, our existing numbers healthy and, and that's why i think I, i've said this said this previously we, we don't stop selling to our student body to our constituents once they're in the door we we continue to Oh my good lord! I am just a popular person today. I'm so sorry. That's another <laughs> program ringing on my device. Sorry, I did silence my main de- my device, and someone's ringing me on a different one. So yes, retention is something that I've found, uh, especially working with the higher ed institutions here in the United States. Something that they were looking for is a tool to aid in that retention and keeping the conversation going once students have been admitted through the door. So um, that has been a huge bit of impact that I think we've been able to help facilitate. And I say we, as in Digistorm and Kayla Solutions through um, our interactions with, with, with some institutions here in the United States. So yeah, 100% retention. So tell me, what are some of the features that you know someone would expect to find in an app? I mean, there's probably a lot of schools that are listening here that have either considered it or they've they've tried it or or they've seen other schools do it. And I mean, there's there's a lot of different things that can be on an app. What what do you guys find is the most uh, compelling for for colleges and universities? So bringing together often it's bringing together the work that the college or university is already doing. So most colleges and universities have some form of blog or news feed that they're you know, talking about activities that are happening around campus. Oh, this is what one of our alum is doing at the moment. Those sorts of inspiring and engaging stories. So we're not looking to reinvent that or force institutions to double handle that information. So we'll bring in to the app the, the news, news feed that's already being used or that blog feed. So the benefit though is of having it on an app is the user can see which articles they have read and haven't read rather than jumping on the website like, geez, have I read everything here? I'm not sure. comes through categorized and it would let you know, hey, there's three articles in alumni relations that you haven't read. And then you read it and it'll let you know there's only two. So that's a huge one. Another one is bringing through the calendar. So sometimes it can be a little difficult to find that calendar of what's happening, whether it's the, the campus-wide calendar or something a little more niche. So just one section of the campus, we bring together one or multiple calendars that are filterable into the app. Super popular amongst the the institutions that we're working with here is just to have that one place for an updated real-time calendar. And then beyond that, smart integrations. So we've already talked about two integrations being the blog and uh, calendar, but I don't talk about smart integrations until I start talking about integrations with college management systems. So we've um, we've been doing some work with uh, Populi here in the US to pull through key information from the, the popular platform into the app natively. So users don't need to log on to the web platform or log on to the popular platform. They can get their to-dos, their information from popular directly through their branded campus app. Those three things, probably the top three tiers, and then mixed from that are things like um, notices, push notices. So being able to send out time-sensitive information to remind your alumni they've got that reunion event coming up this weekend and then there's a giving activity happening just after it and then reminding prospective students that uh, applications are closing in three weeks' time or just sending out something to let prospective current or alumni students know that you're still thinking about them and that you have some sort of message for them. That's something that's been a real, uh, I guess, game changer for the institutions that we're working with so far. Yeah. One of the features that I really like is, uh, you know, if you've got all these different news events or even information about like sports or different uh, activities, you know, there's obviously a lot of student activities and depending on the size of your institution, you might have a lot or a a little, but being able to go into the app and and then be able to choose, Hey, I want to be notified or, or I want information about these things that are of interest to me. So, you know, if I'm really not that keen on, you know, knowing when the, uh, the, the crew club is going to be rowing on the river. Um, I don't have to click on that one, but if I'm interested in knowing when the football team is going to do something or even when the next play is going to be, I can, 
you know, I can go into the app and customize that setting so that that's the information that comes to me. So I think that's a great way to engage with parents even. Um, alumni, obviously, they can get the feeds about alumni. Prospective students can get the feeds about prospective students. And current students can you know, stay up on the clubs and activities that they're most interested in. So I really like the fact that your platform really provides just the ability to customize not only from the school standpoint on the back end, because I know that you have different levels of, of engagement, you know, schools can choose to, to buy the CMS integration or, 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 the, or the, the student portal information uh, integration, or they can, you know, do different customization parts. But you also allow that in the hands of the users too, which I think is so, so critical now. I think that, you know, we've talked to a lot of other guests about personalization and about making sure that Gen Z and and the upcoming Gen Alpha really understand. But this is why I love working with you because you are able to uh, articulate the key features and benefits of my app better than I am. That is exactly (laughs) right. It's so true. And that, that, self-personalization that uh, a user can have is to stop something that we jokingly call death by Candy Crush push notifications. So if anyone has ever been uh, as familiar with Candy Crush and if you don't play it for half a moment, it'll send you a notification and then another one and then another one to the point where you delete Candy Crush from your phone. So the idea of self-personalization is to Bart's point, if I don't, if I don't want to know when the rowing club's getting up at four in the morning to go for a row, I, I can just turn off anything to do with the rowing club uh, and that's A-OK. I just want push notifications about basketball, track and field, what's happening with psychology, and I'm also interested in what's happening with the social mixes. So they're the four things I'm going to get push notifications on and emergencies. I'll still get emergencies. We don't want to be able to turn emergency notifications off. But, yeah, I can curate my own experience so I don't have death by Candy Crush notifications and want to delete the app from my phone. Right. Great point. Right. I know that there's a lot of apps out on the market and I know that, um, and I I know Troy's going to ask another question here in a second, but I just wanted to kind of let everybody know that I was amazed at some of the ways that the way Digistorm is, is very sensitive, I would say, to smaller schools. I know that if I'm not, Correct. Please correct me. Sure. But I believe in Australia, you guys kind of started with the, with the private schools, kind of the K-12s. And, and uh, I know that there are a lot of them are called colleges in Australia. But for us here in the United States and North America, we would see them more as, as private schools. And a lot of times private schools are smaller then you'd have public schools. I really appreciate that Digistorm kind of has carried that over to the way that they handle their higher ed market with their app because there's very competitive pricing. We're not going to get into it today on, on, the, on the show, but that's something that if, if you are a small school, I, I know I've got several clients that I've kind of introduced Jamie to that are schools that are under 300 students. And uh, they've, they've really been amazed that they could actually reach the shelf to do an app through Digistorm. And I really appreciate that because sometimes, you know, one of the most popular blogs on my, uh, on my website is uh, marketing on a small shoestring budget. And I would say that, you know, the, the app that Digistorm can provide uh, can certainly, you know, fit within that. But I would also say that, you know, if you haven't considered an app, whether it's Digistorm or somebody else, certainly take a look at that because I do think it's going to play in well to, to, to retention and, and some of your other efforts as well. So, Jamie, for those who aren't, that don't have an app and they're considering it, what would be the one, the first or second thing that you would advise them to do or to look into or what's the first step? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm often... When I speak to institutions that, that aren't, and I say institutions because, as Bart said, our first, I guess, niche was K-12 independent schools in Australia. We built the very first app for a school in Australia 10 years ago, which is why it's our 10-year anniversary of, of building uh, apps and, and software for schools. But often when I'll speak to a, a college, a university, or a school, and, and they're not 100% sure if they need an app, it's because they say, hey, I just read my website and it's mobile responsive. And I'm like, you know what? Great. I am so happy that your website is mobile responsive. And I know, Bart, you build some pretty pretty nice mobile responsive websites, which is awesome. Because if you don't have a mobile responsive website in this day and age, you're, you're, you're really not treating more than 60% of your traffic the right way. So like, hey, look, it works on mobile. Why do, why do I need an app? And you know what? I, I totally get that. It's great because having a mobile responsive website means that 
when we link to things on your website from the app, they're going to look great in the app, which is, which is awesome. So that's why I love when people have a great website. But the key thing is, is being able to reach out to people and engage them in a time-sensitive manner. That's probably the number one thing that's different from having a real-time calendar on your website and having Facebook and Instagram posts and having posts on your blog. It relies on the user to go and check those things out. Whereas if you've got an app and it doesn't come from Digistorm, it comes from your college with your branding, it will pop up on the user's lock screen saying basketball training this evening has been moved to 7 p.m. And it will show up on my phone actively rather than me having to go to the website, navigate to the athletics page, is basketball still on? Or check the dreaded email, which maybe I check once every couple of days if, you know, my personal email, if I'm being totally honest. Um, So, yeah, it's that active engagement with time-sensitive information that tends to be the aha moment for most people. They're like, oh, of course, yeah. And the fact that there's no cost to send out a push. So if we're already doing SMS, great, great that you're doing SMS. That's an active way to reach your audience. Um, But you'll be paying it per SMS or per bulk buy of SMS cost. Push notifications cost you nothing. Other than the cost of the app, which, as Bart mentioned, we're pretty reasonable there. When clients are normally taken aback in a good way, they're like, oh, is that it? I'm like, "Uh, yeah, (laughs) that includes everything. So, yes. So, yeah, no cost to send out those active engagements with your perspective, current, alum, even faculty. We've got, a, I'm not sure if I'm meant to mention the institution, but if you download the Manor University app, there's some public stuff in there. And they've got a faculty section where they have some videos on training some of their new faculty on how to use systems at Manor University, which I thought was cool. I hadn't seen that before. They made some custom Vimeo videos that we integrated into the app um, for their faculty. So you can also talk with your faculty via the app. But great question. Thank you, Corey. Jamie, as we wind up the episode, is there a topic of the app or something that you would like to leave with everyone that we didn't inquire about or we haven't discussed? Um, the, the power of the two of you being great at what you do, you've kind of covered all those key points. And like I said before, that wasn't in jest. Bart's really good at articulating what the app is, is really useful for in higher ed. I think the last piece I'd like to leave people with is you do not need any coding knowledge at all. If HTML scares you, if XML scares you, if any of that does, or even if it doesn't, working with us, we look after all of the development, all of the design, and we give you a beautiful intuitive content management system to send out those push notifications. If you can send an email, you can be a guru at sending push notifications via your own app. And it's probably the last thing I'd love to leave people. And we need to make these episodes longer because this has been a little too much fun to be wrapping it up now, but that'd be my <laughs> second, second last thought there. But yeah, thanks for having me on. It's been, a, it's been a pleasure. And I'd love to chat to anyone out there in podcast land that's you know halfway interested in like, geez, I hadn't thought about an app. Would love to chat to you. Or I encourage you to talk, talk to, to Troy or to Bart. And they can also point you in the right direction, even if it's not Digistorm. But think about an app in your ecosystem for sure. Thank you, Jamie. And we appreciate that. But if someone would like to contact you directly, what's the best way for them to do so? Yeah, come and hang out in Colorado with me. Uh, I'm usually on the ski slopes uh, in winter. So you can find me there or hiking. So come find me out hiking. If that sounds too hard, which is fair enough, you can grab me on LinkedIn. It's LinkedIn. I'm Jamie Giblet, J-A-M-I-E-G-I-B-L-E-T-T. If you don't want to find me on LinkedIn, you'd rather just email me then you probably just want to grab a pen and paper. It's it's the same thing, J-A-M-I-E dot giblet, G-I-B-L-E-T-T at digistorm.com. You can go to my website, digistorm.com, or, and I'm sorry, sorry that my phone rang earlier, 720-664-3595. And there are all the different ways to contact me. Can't think of another one right now, but hey, if I do, I'll, uh, I'll be sure to let Bart and Troy know and they can get that out to you. Well, three is a charm. And thank you so much, Jamie. You're always a pleasure to talk to. And I look forward to the next conference we get to see one another face to face. Uh, Likewise. Troy, appreciate you for having me on, Bart. uh, Thank you, as always. uh, A pleasure to, to chat with both of you today. Yep. Great. Thank you. Bart, do you have any closing comments? Yeah, I would just go back to kind of a lot of things we've talked about. I mean, you know, we're talking about apps. We're talking about mobile apps, you know, whether it's an Apple, whether it's Samsung, Android, there's all kinds of options. And the things that you can look at and look for are, 
you know, ways that you can enhance not only your recruitment, but just your, you know, this can be used for development. It can be used for retention. There's no limit to how your school can use it because especially like we talked about being able to segment and have the audience be able to choose their experience. A lot of applications, you know, p- pardon the pun for this type of, of tool in your tool chest. And I would really encourage you to kind of look at this. And, and I know that a lot of schools might shy away from it because they think, oh, an app would cost a lot of money. Well, you know, don't shy away from it. Because I mean, I, like I said earlier, this is something that's reachable on a lower shelf for smaller schools. And, uh, and I think it could really make a big difference for some of the smaller schools that we work with, as well as large schools. I mean, you know, you might be a larger school and say, hey, you know, we, we have an app. We had a homegrown one. The developer left. It's hard to keep up to date. Whatever that might be, maybe it's time to kind of grow up and find a, a firm that can help you with that and manage that on your behalf. And, and uh, so just because we're talking about smaller schools, it's not to say that, you know, a Digistorm certainly can handle larger schools as well. So that's kind of what I would say. Just make sure you kind of take a look at it. And again, if you have questions, let us know. And Jamie's always available as well. Thank you, Bart. The Hired Marketer Podcast is brought to you by two companies, Kaler Solutions, Bart's company that provides marketing strategy and branding advice and work to hire ed marketers. And Think Patented, a marketing execution company specializing in printing, mailing, and digital advertising. On behalf of both Bart and I, thank you for joining us. You've been listening to The Higher Ed Marketer. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. If you're listening with Apple Podcasts, we'd love for you to leave a quick rating of the show. Simply tap the number of stars you think the podcast deserves. Until next time.